Okay, welcome to lab number eight, conservation of energy, part one. Just so you know, I was initially intending to do a longer lab for today, two parts, but I'm a little bit behind where I wanted to be, and I decided to basically break the lab up into two weeks. So we're going to do part one today, part two next Wednesday, and on Wednesdays, I'm going to upload an extra lecture, maybe about a half hour, 45 minutes, so we can get caught up a little bit. So today's lab and next week's lab, you should be able to do the entire thing in an hour, maybe a little bit more. Enough time to write it all down, upload it to Mastering Physics, and still have time to watch the lecture and all of that in under three hours. How great is that? So the lab today is really just this. I've got a cart. I'm going to release the cart from rest on the top of an inclined plane. Since it's at rest, it has no kinetic energy, but it does have gravitational potential energy. Then it's going to slide down an inclined plane, and at the very bottom, where we define y equals zero, it's going to have no gravitational potential energy, but it is moving, so it has kinetic energy. And what we're going to answer in today's lab does the gravitational potential energy it has with the start equal the kinetic energy at the very bottom? In essence, is energy being conserved for this particular system? So let me just show you a quick little video of what's happening. Hey, a video of me with another video of me. This should be interesting. So, so again, the experiment is just going to be I'm releasing this part from rest. I'm measuring is what is the speed right before it hits the end there, and looking at is energy conserved. Is the total energy of the cart at the very beginning equal to the total energy of the cart at the very end? Okay, so now I'm going to run through the trials. Each trial. So I'm going to click the cord, and I'm going to release these things from rest. And you, and you. Okay, so you'll be able to see that in the second video where I'm actually doing the data taking. But using the carts themselves, these wireless carts, to measure their own speed, and I'm always releasing the carts from the same height to begin with, basically eight centimeters, you'll see that on the video. So let me just give you a little bit of background and tell you exactly what you need to turn in for the informal report for lab eight. So remember, our whole energy principle, our whole model is that we have a system. System is defined by you. Inside the system, energy be, can, can be transformed from one form to another without loss. So within a system, if there's nothing doing work on the system, the total energy is constant, but there's different forms of it. Now, how you transfer energy into and out of a system is by doing work on it. If a force does positive work on a system, it adds energy to the system. If a force does negative work on a system, it removes energy from it. And the total change in energy of the system, how much it changes, is equal to the work done by all external forces, which is any force the environment exerts on the system. So our big overlying principle is the change in energy of a system is equal to the total work done on that system by all external forces. Now, in the beginning of this chapter, I introduced some of the forms of energy we're looking at. We've got kinetic, we've got gravitational potential energy, we've got elastic potential energy, thermal energy, and also chemical energy. Now, in this chapter, we are not dealing with chemical energy. The only forms of energy we're looking at are kinetic energy, energy of motion, one-half mv squared. We have two different forms of potential energy. We have gravitational potential energy. We've already seen as mgy. Well, we haven't seen that, but we'll be seeing that. And you've got elastic potential energy, which we'll see is one-half k delta x squared. Now, thermal energy I'm going to talk about in chapter 9. It is not being dealt with in this lab. We're going to assume there's no friction, no air resistance, so no heat is being generated. So our big energy principle is 
the change in energy of the system is equal to the total work done on it by all external forces. That changes the kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. It can change the gravitational potential energy, mgy. It can change the elastic potential energy, 1 half k delta x squared. And it can change the thermal energy. So those are the four big forms of energy we're dealing with. In this particular lab, there's no spring. There's no spring. There's no elastic potential energy. That whole delta elastic energy term goes to zero. And we're assuming there's no air resistance or friction, which means there's no heat being generated. Thermal energy is not going to change. So what we have is how much the energy of our system changes, which our system is just going to be this cart sliding down an inclined plane that we're going to assume is frictionless. That change in energy will be the work done by all external forces, and that'll equal the change in kinetic energy plus the change in gravitational potential energy. So if I rewrite this, delta K, change in kinetic energy is just K final minus K initial. The change in gravitational potential energy is just final potential energy minus initial potential energy. And again, gravitational potential energy, the equation for this is mgy, where y is the elevation in meters. So rewriting this, what we have is my initial kinetic energy plus my initial gravitational potential energy plus the work done by all external forces equals my final kinetic energy plus my final gravitational potential energy. For this particular system of a cart sliding down a frictionless incline plane, we're defining our system as the earth and the cart. And one of the things I'll go through, a big important point from this chapter is, if I'm going to use gravitational potential energy as one of my forms of energy, then the earth must be part of your system. Potential energy is always an interaction between two objects. So if I just have a cart, a cart by itself in an elevated position doesn't have gravitational potential energy. It's only relative to the Earth. So anytime I'm using gravitational potential energy, the Earth has to be part of my system. So if I look at the forces acting on this cart, there's only two. Whoops. If I draw a free body diagram, I only have the normal force acting straight up and gravity mg acting straight down. Gravity is just the earth pulling on the cart, so that's an internal force because I've defined my system as the earth and the cart. So the only external forces is the normal force. But in this case, the normal force is not doing any work because this cart is displaced down the incline. The normal force is perpendicular to the incline. The angle for calculating the work done by the normal force in this case is 90 degrees, so the normal force is not doing any work. What that means is the external forces, which in this case is just the normal force, is not doing any work, which means there's no energy being transferred into or out of the system, which means the total energy should be constant. And we only have two forms of energy we're looking at. We've got kinetic energy, which is 1 half mv squared. m is the mass in kilograms. v is the speed in meters per second. And we've got gravitational potential energy, mgy. And one of the things that we're going to see that's going to be huge in doing problems is that you can define y equals 0 anywhere. So in essence, what I've done is I've defined y equals zero to be the height of the cart when it's at the very lowest point. So that at the very lowest point, it doesn't have any gravitational potential energy. So going back, there's only two forms of energy. And we're basically just saying that the kinetic energy plus the gravitational potential energy, that sum, which is the total energy, is not changing. So my initial kinetic plus my initial potential has to equal my final kinetic plus my final gravitational potential energy. Now, it started from rest, which means there is no kinetic energy to begin with, and it's ending 
at y equals zero, which means there is no gravitational potential energy to end with. So what we're basically saying is the initial gravitational potential energy of the cart, mgy initial, should equal the final kinetic energy of the cart at the very lowest point. This, in essence, is what we're looking at. Is energy conserved? Does the final kinetic energy of the cart at the bottom of the ramp equal the initial kinetic energy of the cart at the top. So the big question we're answering is, <clears throat> excuse me, does the initial gravitational potential energy, mgy initial of the cart, equal the final kinetic energy of the cart, one half mv squared? So again, the setup is, this cart is being released from rest from an initial height of eight centimeters. So you can calculate the initial potential energy mg y initial. It doesn't have any kinetic energy to start with because it's not moving. At the very lowest point, we've defined y equals zero. So it doesn't have any gravitational potential energy. It's all kinetic. The mass of the cart I got from the video, y initial, I'm releasing it from eight centimeters every single time. It starts from rest. Its final height is zero. And for each trial, we're getting the speed at the bottom of the ramp just from the carts themselves. Remember, these are wireless carts that are measuring their own speed. So really, again, does the final kinetic energy at the bottom equal the initial potential energy at the very highest point? The turn in for this lab, super straightforward, really just data and answering one question. So here's what I'd like to see. <clears throat> one. What is the gravitational potential energy of the cart to begin with? What is mgy initial? Please don't just write down a number. Show me what the mass is, the value of g you're using, the initial height. So what I want to just see is my initial gravitational potential energy to start with, mgy initial. Give me values for each one of these. Tell me what the energy is to begin with. Then. From the video, you've got 10 different trials. I give you the speed for each trial. What you're doing is just calculating the kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. I would recommend having Excel do this, and then you could really just turn in the Excel sheet where you can answer in Excel just the question number five, what are some sources of error? So 10 different speeds, you're calculating 10 different kinetic energies. Then from your 10 different values, you're going to calculate an average, a standard deviation, and a standard error. So 10 different kinetic energies, take the average of those 10, standard deviation, standard error. And then the big question is, are your experimental results consistent with the theoretical prediction? Our theoretical prediction, we're just calling our initial gravitational potential energy, our theoretical energy. And then our experimental results is basically our kinetic energy at the bottom, one half m v final squared. Remember, our test for consistency is does the theoretical value fall within two standard errors of our mean value? So you've got a theoretical value, mgy initial. Calculate that in joules. You've got 10 different kinetic energies. Get the average standard deviation and standard error and see whether that theoretical value falls within two standard errors of your mean value. And then last but not least, what are some possible sources of error in this experiment? So again, just do this as you're watching the video, write down these results, do the calculations in Excel, answer the question, and don't leave it to the last minute, just upload it now. And then when you're done with the lab, There'll be another additional video posted as a little lecture, probably going to recap chapter nine, do some example problems, and we're then done with chapter nine. Huh, that is it. Hope you're having a great day and you enjoy this lab. And then next week I will do lab nine, which will be conservation of energy part due. All right, that's it. Over and out.